now it's nice and clean no haze on the color wheel no haze on the rotor next we'll clean the sensor same procedure little alcohol just simply wipe the sensor gently dry it off I like to put just a little droplet moist towel on there we'll dry that off inspect the connections very carefully these four connections on the back make sure they're not broke loose sometimes the heat can destroy the solder as well next we'll go ahead and remount the sensor back onto the color wheel assembly One thing I like to do as well is I always wrap this connector with aluminum tape because you can see um, it used to be a white connector where the ribbon cable plugs in. Now it's turned brown just because of the heat of the lamp and the ultraviolet rays. All I've done is cut a thin piece of aluminum tape. I'm just going to tuck it underneath. Very carefully fold it over to the top. Just make sure it doesn't touch the connectors back down in here. And this will ensure that no light gets onto that plastic and degrades it any further. Now we can go ahead and reassemble the light tunnel. As well as the color wheel. Put the cover back on. It may take a little bit of pressure to form the aluminum around it. Go ahead and reattach all the cables back to the DMD board. Now the next thing we want to do is go ahead and clean this little lens. You have to get a short little stubby screwdriver in here to remove this screw. The lens can be just lifted out of here very gently. You can see how dirty it is, how hazy it is. It's got the same haze on it. So we're going to clean that and put it back in. <coughs> now I've got the lens all cleaned. It's ready to go back in here. Just drops into place. The keeper just fits right on it there.
There we go. Also, I'm going to take my damp paper towel and just clean the metal right around the lens to get all the residue off of it. There was so much on there. You can see how dirty it is. Wow. Also, while you've got the set out, you should wipe the lens off very carefully. Use no cleaners, no Windex, no solvents. Just water only to clean this lens. It's plastic. Um, I've had good luck just using paper towels as long as they're damp. They don't seem to scratch whatsoever. Now our engine is completely reassembled. All ready to go. Back into the TV. Just one other thing I like to do on this circuit. Uh, this is called the interface board, a schematic for it as you can see right here. Uh, here's the, uh, the fan power supply for the lamp fan. There's also a supply for the ballast fan. This one's for the DMD fan. Um, I'm going to change, I'm actually going to add a resistor in parallel with this 1K resistor right here to change the value, and it's between pin 3 and pin 4 of IC9J05. I'm not going to do anything to the ballast fan because the ballast, I've never had a problem, but I'm going to do it also to the lamp fan IC9J03 in between pin 3 and 4. Uh, I'm going to add a resistor to it to increase the speed of the fan. Normally these fans run at about 8 volts and I'm going to increase it to close to 12 volts uh, for extra ventilation on this set to help keep it cool. So here's the interface board from that set. It's located right below the light engine. Fans and everything plug into it. And what we're interested is these two regulator ICs right here. These two ICs right here are the ones we're interested in. 9J05, 9J03, and we're looking at pins 3 and pin 4. We just want to add a resistor. We can just tack a little quarter watt resistor across those two pins on both of these ICs to increase the fan speed. I found that anywhere between about a 1.2 and a 1.5K seems to work fairly well. It's in parallel with a 1K resistor already on the board. So here's the board after we've added the 1.2K resistors to them. Just on those two regulators in between, in between pins 3 and 4. will result in about a 12 volt fan voltage instead of about 8 volts. One other thing I wanted to talk about is this lamp. 150 watt OSRAM in this model. It's got the same screens that Mitsubishi has used on their later, mo later models TV and they tend to plug up with dust. When these plug up it can cause the lamp uh, door, the lamp little tunnel, uh, access tunnel to warp. So um, one thing I always do is I'm going to remove the screens. There's an exit screen down in here as well as these two screens just to help a little bit more air get through the lamp to keep it cool because uh, in my estimation a cool lamp is a lamp that lasts longer. So I'm just going to take these two screws out right here. This cover just pops off. You can usually just push it in with your finger or worst case a screwdriver. Just pull the lamp or the screen right out of it. That one's done. Push your finger through there, pull the screen out. Make sure you get all the little stragglers left behind. get to the rest of the screen. It's just a matter of pushing the screen out. Once you get it pushed out, just give it a tug and it's off there. Now I know there are some people on the internet that, that talk about this just simply removing 
this piece and leaving it off. I just take the screens out. I think it's going to get adequate airflow now without the screens being in there. So you shouldn't have to worry about that. But it's up to you. It's just two screws. You can leave this half completely off if you want to. And here's our same set after everything's all said and done. Got the engine back in it. There's the menu. Well, on the screen it looks like the correct color. Hard to say on the uh, video. But I'll bring up the color bar patterns again. Menu 2457 to enter this mode. Press the audio button to get into the uh, formatter board adjustments. Press video until you're at number 12 on this one, which is color wheel index, IDL, index delay. It should normally be 221, 222, 223 is what I'm pretty typically seeing. Press the fast forward button to bring up the test patterns. Press it twice and you've got the color wheel um, adjustment screen here and what you really want to look for, I'll misadjust it uh, intentionally here. There we are. There's there's uh, 212. I'll go back a little farther. There's 205 and what you want to look at is the shading difference right here. Right here. And then uh, usually on the green you can see it. I'll go up the other direction now. Yeah, we can see the shading difference again between the red and it's turning pink right there. Also a couple bands up here pretty easy to see. Let's set it back at 223 where the factory default was. Color wheel index looks absolutely perfect. Picture looks great on it. There's no solarization on anything now. We'll zoom back in on it here. Uh, the bars you're seeing in the pictures are because of the fast shutter on the camera. Uh, it's not there on the screen uh, unless I look through the viewfinder of the camera.